Hello, and welcome to Team Batman's second presentation for MIS 4478. Team Batman is team number six and is comprised of Shao Queen, John Bien, Louis Boatman, and Jonathan Davis. Today we'll be going over Christensen's Disruptive Technologies model. The model was introduced by Clayton Christensen in a 1995 article he co-authored, but was later expanded upon and made famous in his 1997 book published by Harvard Business School Press. This book received the Global Business Book Award for the best business book of that year and helped elevate Christensen and his model to fame within the business world. We will now discuss the background of Clayton Christensen. Clayton Christensen is the Kim B. Clark Professor of Business Administration at the Harvard Business School with a joint appointment in the Technology and Operations Management and General Management faculty groups. He is known best for his work in the study of innovation and commercial enterprises. What exactly is disruptive innovations? When a company's core business has matured and its growth begins to slow, those running the business tend to seek new and creative ways to keep their market share, often by introducing new products or innovations that seem simpler and cheaper than others. While these sorts of ideas might not interest the consumers, that have been their core audience until that point, they can interest or even create new segments of the market. This effect is called disruptive innovation, and it offers a method for smaller entrants with fewer resources available to compete with large incumbent companies. Christensen describes disruptive innovation this way in his book. Disruptive technologies bring to a market a very different value proposition than had been available previously. Generally, disruptive technologies underperform established products in mainstream markets, but they have other features that a few fringe and generally new customers value. In his book, Christensen investigated why some innovations, despite being revolutionary to some degree, managed to reinforce the incumbent's position in a certain industry, contrary to what previous models would predict. We will now take a comparison to sustaining versus disruptive innovations. An important part of Christensen's work is the dichotomy between sustaining innovation and disruptive innovation. A sustaining innovation improves the usage and performance of existing products along the dimensions that customers care about. However, pursuing a sustaining approach puts the entrant against established companies in the field and is, it is this that often leads to the entrants eventually losing the battle and being completely knocked off the playing field. Disruptive innovation, on the other hand, will often have characteristics that at least initially traditional customer segments might not care for. These innovations will seem cheaper, simpler, and even inferior to existing products, but there will be a marginal or new segment that will value it. If the innovation sees success, then a new market is created, one that might grow large enough to challenge even the largest incumbent. Thus, it's very important for organizations to balance the sustainment of their current products as well as a continued push for research into disruptive innovations as well. Exploring the digital age in the 21st century. Here we are beginning, at the beginning of the 21st century, a new society is being introduced to us, a society that depends on mobility. At the forefront of this new age are companies who are desperately struggling to claw their way to the top and claim their former glory, while others have dared to dream and have made their way to the top, becoming household names. Who are these companies? What products could have been so innovative to change an entire industry and further mold the future? We'll now go over a few examples of these disruptive innovations, as well as the companies behind them. The first innovation that we will discuss is tablets. For years, desktop computers dominated the technology industry when it came to personal computing. The market for personal computers was then taken over by laptop computers. They allowed for mobile computing and were well marketed to those of busy lifestyles, especially those of young college students. But as the saying goes, out with the old and in with the new. A large corporation, well known for being innovative, penetrated the markets once again. Having already disrupted the markets once before with its iPod, it had done it again. Apple, being this company, has found a new way to introduce tablets into the world of personal computing with its very own iPad, and has taken quite a bite out of the market of personal computing. 
Other technology companies are now desperate to catch up to the forefront of this race. Both desktops and laptops have had to lower their pricing just to stay competitive within the mobile market. The next innovation that we will discuss is cell phones and landlines. Due to limited sound quality of calls made on cell phones several years ago, they didn't really fit the needs for many that used landlines. However, for others, the limited quality was a reasonable trade-off for the advantage of a portable telephone. Over the years, cell phone technology radically improved and companies that focused their resources on sustaining landlines eventually found that they were too far behind the curve to really catch up. Now the number of cell phones owned continues to explode while landlines are slowly disappearing. According to USA Today, even if a home has a landline, it is not necessarily used. In the state of Texas, wireless phones are the primary means of receiving calls in 52.8% of homes. Not to mention, in addition, the newly introduced smartphones. People are now able to read emails, browse the web, text, make calls, and download apps that even fit their lifestyles. The next disruptive innovation that we would be discussing also challenges phones in general, cell phones as well as landlines. The arrival of Skype has hugely changed the landscape for long distance communication, whereas international calls can be prohibitively expensive. It costs nothing to communicate with another Skype user, regardless of where that person is located, not to mention the video chat as well as a few other bells and whistles make it stand out. Additionally, in recent years, Skype has added the ability to make calls to any phone. Skype's rates are much lower than what a person would pay with a standard te telecommunications provider. The approximate 700 million Skype-to-Skype -Skype calls made each day and Skype's ever-increasing user base are an enormous threat to wireless operators. Blockbuster, closing at a store near you. Yes, unfortunately, Blockbuster is all but derailed by the likes of Netflix and Redbox, who now dominate the market for video rentals or video streaming as it may be. Blockbuster was a one-time place that people would go on a Friday night when they wanted to sit in for a movie night, but those days are long and gone, along with their late fees and trips to their stores to pick up their movies. Redbox is conveniently located virtually around every corner, whereas Netflix can either be streamed on your laptop, TV, or sent via mail for DVDs. Now, although these are not technologies, they are innovative services or ideas. The next example that we will be talking about is somewhat different from our others. It is a little bit older. Several decades ago, large furniture-like analog radios were the norm but transistor radios were introduced as a smaller, portable substitute. The catch was that its sound quality was inferior to the furniture-like radios. The transistor radio found popularity with teenagers who wanted to make their music, take their music to the beach, something that seems trivial to us today, but had not been possible until that time. In conclusion, companies that rely too much on their core offerings without introducing disruptive innovations and attempting to create new markets are risking shutting themselves out of new markets that others will create. Additionally, they might find themselves with a decreasing amount of market share as others' disruptive innovations begin being seen as higher value and start pushing more established technologies out of the market. In relation to today, we will Will we see Apple continue its success or slowly decline? It's already released its fifth generation of iPhones, but the differences from its previous generation are not landmark. Will, a Microsoft, will Microsoft do a long haul and become the tech giant that it once was? Or will we see a company unknown to us today and, and yet in its infancy age change the face of technology once more? Christensen, Christensen has showed that time and time again, the vast majority of organizations that have failed or have been displaced from their tr industries due to successful disruptive innovations could see the disruption coming but failed to take action until it was too late. It is important that while maintaining and continuing to improve their core offering, companies work to research what their customers want and invest in new technologies and paradigms 
that will lead to disruptive innovations to create new markets that will help ensure the company's continued success. Thank you for watching our presentation and thank you for your time. Time and thank you for watching our presentation.